In the world of agency and client services, there is one metric that stands above the rest that actually will determine your ability and level of success. It's not your sales metrics. It's not your traffic metrics. This metric is so powerful yet often overlooked. In fact, after working with hundreds of agencies and consultants over the years, this number is often confused for a completely different metric altogether. And this number is so important that if you eventually wanted to sell your business, this number most investors or buyers will be looking at to determine if this is a worthwhile investment for them or not. Now, whether you want to sell or not, it doesn't really matter. Impacting and understanding how to leverage this metric will help you, the founder, take home more money. It'll help you escape the constant hustle of the day-to-day -day operations. It'll allow you to afford to hire more help. It'll allow you to spend more on acquiring more clients and growth. And when you stick around till the end of this video, you'll not only understand this metric, but you're going to understand how to apply it and use it inside of your business Business starting right now to not only just survive and get by, but to have a thriving, profitable business that lets you live an abundant lifestyle with your family. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Greg Hickman. I'm the founder of Alt Agency. We help digital marketing and creative service professionals and agencies to systematize and productize their service delivery so it runs like a well-oiled machine and help them get paid for their expertise and their thinking. And so if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and click that subscription button and that notification bell because we release videos each and every week. So what is this mystery metric that you're speaking of, Greg? Well, that metric, my friends, is the gross profit margin. Now, the gross margin actually will help you determine the health of a business, and it is the direct cost of fulfilling the services that you deliver. So the equation to get your gross margin is actually your revenue minus your cost of goods sold. Now, cost of goods sold is typically used for product based companies. And so in agency world, in client services, it's really cost of service. So your, it's going to be your revenue less subtracted, your cost of service delivery equals your gross profit margin. Now that's often represented as a percentage. So you multiply by hundred to get it as a percent. Now, my friend Marcel Petipa from Parakeeto, who we've had on the channel, I'll link that in the description below. He likes to call this delivery margin and I love calling it delivery margin as well. Thanks Marcel, because it really helps people that are early to business start to understand that there is a cost to deliver. And so gross profit margin is your cost of service delivery, thus we call it delivery margin. Now, the thing to really understand with gross margin is that it's the incremental cost of one additional unit, one additional client. So it doesn't include things like your HR director or your office rent if you have it. It's the cost incurred from one additional unit sold. And oftentimes we see agencies and service providers, even early freelancers, confuse this with net margin, which is actually impacted by your gross margin. So your net margin is really just like the juice at the end of the squeeze, right? When all is said and done at the end of the month, after the delivery costs, after your rent, after all other operating expenses, payroll, et cetera, what's left over is your net margin. So basically your net margin represents everything that's left over after all of the other remaining expenses have been subtracted out from your top line revenue. Therefore, like I said, why this is so important is if you are trying to get to say a 30% net margin, having a really healthy gross profit margin or delivery margin is absolutely critical. Now, one common mistake that I see a lot of people or area where they get trapped is in those early days where it's really just you delivering. And so you're kind of keeping everything anyway. But that's a really unhealthy way to look at it because you are filling a role that will eventually be hired and fulfilled by someone else if you are trying to build a business that is you know, not dependent upon you. And so there are costs that you incur that are tied to your delivery margin and should be subtracted. But there's also probably costs that you incur as the owner when you're wearing the other non-delivery related hats, when you are playing the role of marketer, or if you're doing any sort of admin work, all of those things, you have to look at kind of these different roles inside the business that you're actually wearing different hats for if it's just you right now. And, and this is why I think so many people just push it under the rug and they're like, oh, well, my margin is this. And they're talking about what's left over at the end of the day. And so they don't really think about how they might be able to impact this number when they approach it that way their economics aren't in a place where it will be healthy the second they hire one additional person to help. Now that we understand the difference between our gross margin and our net margin, let's actually go through a hypothetical example on the iPad so you can see how just the subtle changes of these numbers can impact your business. And then we can identify the two, really the only two ways that you can actually impact your gross margin to have more money at the end of the day. All right, so we're going to use really simple numbers here to break this down. Let's say your revenue, the thing that you sell ends up 
up being $100, okay? Or $100 an hour. And it costs you $50 to deliver it, whether it's you pay yourself 50 or you're paying someone else $50 to deliver it. As you would imagine, simple math, we have $50 left over. So if we take our cost of delivery, $50, and divide that by our revenue, $100, what do we have? We have 50%, okay? So right there, you have a 50% gross margin, 50% delivery margin. Now, after the year is all said and done, or even the month is all said and done, you have OPEX, right? Your operating expenses. These are things like rent, you know, payroll that is not tied to delivery, probably some software, things like that. Your operating expenses are all of the things that are not directly tied to the delivery of the service. So if we have a 50% gross profit margin. After the, all is said and done, let's say we are left with a 15% net profit margin margin. Okay. So that's really where we're at. Here's the thing. You might be like, okay, well, Greg, 50%, like that sounds like it's okay. For agency service businesses, I will say 50% is the lowest this number should be if you want to have healthy profits. And quite frankly, I think it should be a lot higher, but this is like the floor. Like if you're below a 50% delivery margin, this video is even more important for you. But I want to show you how just by increasing it, what you can actually do and the impact that it can have on your business. Business. So let's look at what could happen to your business if we go from 50% and increase up to 65%. Now you might be saying, hey, Greg, 15%, like that's all not that big of a deal. Well, I want to show you how it is a big deal. So 65%, right, is now your new gross profit margin. So let's say at the end, after all is said and done, all of the rest of the OPEX expenses, if we look at that, we've just now gone to a 30% if we've kept our OPEX and everything the same, which is 100% doable. We've just doubled your net profit margin, meaning we have more money to pay ourselves as the founder outside of our salary. We have more money to reinvest back into the business and grow. So just by increasing our gross profit margin from 50% to 65%, we actually have gone to doubling our net profit at the end of the year. Okay, so that all sounds great. We've been able to go from 50% to 65%, but how is that even possible? The first way for us, let me highlight here, is by decreasing our cost cost of delivery. So let's say in the new world, we are able to decrease our price or our cost to deliver to $35, right? The cost for going from 50 to 35 changes this number from 50 to 65, which gives us our 65% gross margin. So if we reverse engineer that, actually, I'll leave that there for you. Let's do a different color, purple. The other option is we can actually increase the price. So the other area of interest would be your price. You could just charge more. If we just raise the new price to 150 15 bucks and we kept the price at 50, we will still end up with that same 65 number. All right. So the only two ways to really change your gross profit margin is to either charge more for the service or to figure out how to decrease your cost to deliver the service. As I said, what's included for your cost of delivery will vary because depending upon what type of agency you are and how you deliver your services will kind of determine what those things are. But direct labor costs. So these are wages paid to employees employees or freelancers or contractors that are directly tied to generating agency revenue via the client projects. So think about billable hours of people that go towards client projects. Then there are things like technology fees. So if you're a tech enabled service and or you are using software to get your clients the actual result, those software expenses would be incorporated into your delivery costs. I mentioned media fees. If any sort of what they pay you gets passed through to media spend, any sort of onboarding costs, like if you send out like a physical welcome kit or anything like that, or a gift, like a welcome gift, that could be a part of your cost of delivery. And then really any sort of like change orders. So like if you're adding on from scope creep and you're like adding more deliverables or updating the timeline or the budget and they're paying for that, those are things that would again, impact your cost of delivery. Now, since on this channel, we talk about productizing your services, we have to look at kind of that spectrum because you might be like, what's actually good. Now, I already alluded to the fact that the floor the minimum that I think you should allow for your delivery margin to be, your gross margin should be, is 50%. And so that's like, when I think of 50%, that is the floor for any sort of service-based business or agency, okay? But we talk about productizing and I want to like introduce you to the idea again that you can get this up higher. I mean, there are businesses out there that are products, like physical products, like think of some of the most successful businesses in the world. They actually have very high gross margins of say like 
90%, 99%. And so that's like true product. And so you can get a productized service to 75, 80%. And there's some cases where it could be even more. Now for a productized service business, you could get this anywhere from 60 to 80%. And then if you kind of create productized programs like training, group consulting, hybrid delivery services, you could obviously, again, that can bump up even more to like that 70 to 90 plus percent. And so there's this sliding scale, right? If you're doing any sort of service, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, agency type client delivery work, the floor should be 50%. But we can do so much more because if we think about this again, if we look from just a percentages perspective and we go and we say, okay, well, okay, 100%, this is your top line revenue, okay? If we can keep our delivery margin really healthy, and let's just, we'll start with the 50 as the floor. So 50%, right? We now have 50% left over. If you follow methodologies like profit first, who says like, hey, you should pay yourself and allocate profit first. So let's say you wanted to have 30% profit, right? So if this is 30% profit, what we can now see is if we're 30% profit, we actually have only 20% left over to run and operate the entire business. So this is things like HR, you know, admin, this is your payroll, you know, rent, if you have an office, all of those expenses that are not tied to the actual delivery that we have accounted for up here. Sales, marketing, you know, often find themselves like down here, you know, and if you look at say a SaaS company, they spend about anywhere from 30 to 60% of revenue on just marketing and sales alone. Businesses that we consult are usually spending anywhere from I'll say 10 to 20% that makes up sales and marketing alone of your top line revenue. So you can start to see how quick if your gross margin here is 50% and you want to have a 30% profit, it's going to be very difficult to run your entire business, marketing, admin, all of those things in a scalable way on 20% that's remaining. So if we can get, you know, this to be a 70% margin, so we have 70% left over. Now, when you take out, say your 30% profit, you have 40% to now run your business. Hopefully this is making some sense. And again, why having a healthy gross margin is really important is the impact on your business from a health perspective. If you want to scale and grow the healthy gross margin going from 50 to 60 to 70 to even 80 plus percent allows you to invest in growth opportunities. It allows you to reinvest in innovation and marketing. Also, obviously, will provide some financial stability, especially if you hit turbulent times, knowing that there's more money left over after you deliver the goods really helps kind of create that buffer for any sort of economic downturn or uncertainty and or any client churn if people are leaving. And we've all heard that the people that can spend the most to acquire a client will always win. So having a gross margin of 70 and 80 plus percent inside of your service based business does give you a competitive advantage over all of your competitors that have, say, less than 50 percent gross margin because they're not going to be able to afford the help. They're going to run into capacity issues, operational drag. They're going to feel it way more than you would if you have that higher gross margin. There are people out there like Alex Hormozzi and plenty of others that are buying businesses. And Alex Hormozzi in some of his YouTube shorts has even gone on to say that when he looks at acquiring a company for acquisition.com, that they have to be able to either A, already be over 80% profit margin in order for him to look at it as a viable investment, or he needs to be able to look at that business and very clearly see that they can impact and change that gross profit margin to be above 80%. So if you're thinking about how you can grow your business, become more scalable, keep more money at the end of the day, we have to focus on gross profit margin, which means we have to one, figure out how to decrease the cost to deliver. Maybe that means finding talent that is more affordable to deliver or just raise our prices. And as you saw earlier in the example, even just a change of 10, 15% in your gross profit margin could lead to double, if not more, how much you keep at the end of the day. Now, I put together another video right here, breaking down the three most common profit killers that service providers have. So if you can fix these three things, you'll be able to increase that gross profit margin right away. Go check it out.